All right, so I see a ton of posts and questions about different ways to do boost control on the Terminator X Holly EFI system. Because on the Terminator, they did away with all the other types of boost control. It's on HP and Dominator. The only one they kept is Dome. So it's Dome only. And most budget guys that buy the Terminator don't want to mess with Dome. They don't want CO2 or onboard air. They just want to give it a duty cycle or run off map because like on the hot on the HP and the dominator you can go map and dome you got to set up a big table and set up PID loops and all that stuff and it's kind of a pain in the butt at first but once you get it set it's really nice because you just tell it make this amount of boost and it'll do it and instead of doing dome numbers where you got to guess well, I wonder how much boost at this much dome you know but uh so i'm going to show you guys an alternate way i'm not a big fan of wiring into the map sensor some guys like on the sloppy mechanics page and some other guys they'll manipulate the dome boost control and they'll rob the five volt source off of the map sensor and use that as the dome control and I guess you could make that work, but man, I, I just don't like that idea. I, I don't want to mess with the map sensor. I don't want to read off the map sensor. I just want the map sensor to do the map sensor, do the map sensor's job, you know. But, uh, so the way that we've been doing it is we can set it up as like a nitrous deal. Just use the nitrous tables. You just tell it, you know, what duty cycle to run, and it'll run it. So it's just like open loop uh, boost control, and you can do that with a single three port or four port, four port. But uh, yeah, that's why we've been setting it up on the more budget stuff that, and the people don't really need it. I mean, if you got an eight pound spring in it and you only want to run 15 pounds of boost well you can just run it buy a $40 Mac valve 3 port wire it in like this and in theory it'll make double what the spring will what the spring will make so if the spring's at eight pounds it should make in a perfect world 16 sometimes it'll make more sometimes it'll make less depends on the combo and everything but if you want to get a little bit more uh, range of adjustment you get a four port and you can make a lot more variance with the four port because not only is it just adding pressure to the top it's actually taking pressure away from the bottom of the gate too so you can get a lot more range of boost control with the four port which they're not that much more money I think they're like 15 or 20 dollars more than a three port but they're a lot more touchy when you set them up but anyways beyond that I'm going to show you guys how I wire it up and set it up in the holly, how I plumb it. I'll show you guys everything just for the guys that want to know. So I ran into my first issue. The wastegate where it's placed, it's in a great position for exhaust flow and everything, but it's right against the, almost against the inside of the fender. The top of it is. There's only like maybe three quarters of an inch, if that. Um, so I can't really put a fitting on the top of the gate because there's none on the side. On this gate, there's only one on the top. And the gate's kind of weirdly shaped. There's no flat spots for me to drill and tap on the side. So I'm going to try something a little different on this one. I'll show you guys. I'll, give you a di I'll post up a diagram on this video and show you a picture of how I normally do it. I normally have it or on a three port. Uh, port one is... Uh, from the turbo, point uh, port three is vent, and port two is to the top of the gate. And obviously, the the line that comes from the turbo is wide. And each side of that Y, one goes to port one on this, and one goes to the bottom of the gate. And when this is a hundred percent duty cycle, it's the exact amount of pressure to the top of the gate that is at the bottom. Um, 
but with not being able to put a fitting on the top without having to redo the wastegate placement, which I will if I have to, but I want to try it this way because in theory it should work pretty good still. I'm going to do it to where it just bleeds off pressure from the bottom of the gate. So at a 100% duty cycle, it's like there's no line to the gate at all. And it's just whatever back pressure is will open the gate. On my car, if I unplug the pressure source, it'll make a little over double the spring. So I'm hoping, it has a lot to do with back pressure, because that's what you're regulating the boost with at this point, doing it this way, really. But, uh, we'll see. I'll test it out on this, and it works good. We'll leave it. If not, then I'll change it. But, doing it this way where it's a bleeder to just the bottom, port one is open, port two is the input from the turbo, port three is to the bottom of the gate so at zero percent duty cycle it's getting full amount of pressure so it'll open just like it normally would at wastegate wherever the wastegate spring is and then as you turn it up it's it's uh, bleeding off the pressure from the bottom and it gets less and less helping it open and it'll make more and more boost so I'm gonna try it that way see how it works but the wiring still going to be the same as normal. Setting it up in the ECU is still going to be the same as normal. So I'll walk you guys through all that in a little bit and show you how to do it. Alright, so so far in the video I didn't explain how to wire this thing. It's pretty straightforward. The Terminator does not trigger positive outputs. It only do negative. So it doesn't matter which wire on the Mac valve but one will go to uh, key on power 12 volts and the other will go to the Holly and it'll trigger it as a PWM negative so I figured I'd explain it to you guys real quick before we went on alright so we're gonna add the nitrous config go to toolbox add individual config go to nitrous default nitrous and here's the, the nitrous deal. And why we're going to set it up as uh, the type is wet progressive. That way you actually have like a time based uh, progressive ramp. And then you can have all these uh, activation and deactivation deals here. I normally do something like this. And then uh, be sure and turn off all these like nitrous deals that they got. They got different safeties and different things. The timing retard and then a set AFR. Turn all that stuff off. You're mainly going to be worried about the progressive control down here. When Once you get it all set up, this is mainly where you're going to go to set up your boost ramp. And the one thing that's kind of sucky about using the nitrous steel is that it takes two inputs it'll take one to start the progressive ramp and then one to just enable it which is kind of kind of silly in my opinion but it's no big deal as far as the triggering part you're going to use the same input as your transbreak two-step or whatever and then the nitrous enable just put that to like key on power that way as soon as the key's on it's all ready to go and ready to be triggered and the way we'll do that is you go to input uh, check input number one and go to will disable this stage that way as soon as you let go of your trans brake button two-step button whatever it'll start the uh, progressive control and one cool thing about doing that, doing it that way, is that when you're just driving around in the street, you know, you're not on the trans brake button or whatever. So this is always going. So you always have extra boost when you're just messing around on the street, you know, rolling into it, showing off, doing rolling burnouts or whatever. You always have extra boost. And that's, that's kind of cool in my opinion. Because most of the time when you have time-based boost control and then you want to go on the street and you just want to play around and not actually street racing 
you have to trigger it somehow or you got to set up like RPM based or mile per hour based boost controller or whatever but that's a whole different deal but you'll go over here to the inputs and outputs and you, here you can you can uh, do whether it's 12 volt or ground like I said the uh, nitrous enable I'll normally just wire that to a key key on power and then the uh, input one will be whatever your two-step or trans brake button is so if it's a ground leave it a ground if it's 12 volt leave it a 12 volt and then like I said your nitrous output will be a PWM negative and then you go to uh, your pin map and here's your rev limiter you know this all be the same thing whether it's rev limiter two-step tra or trans brake or whatever you'll take your nitrous input number one and lay it just on top of it that's why it's all in the same input and then your enable button will be the key on power you know whatever and then your output will be the nitrous uh, stage output and don't mess with the boost solenoid stuff because that's for the boost control that you're not using but I like to still leave the uh, boost ICF on here for safeties because you can do a boost cut and you can do a switch trigger safeties like caution outputs on uh, like you can set up your safeties through here on your oil pressure and stuff and click switched output enable switch caution output and then go over here and go to caution output you know cut ignition and I've done a whole a whole other video on safeties if you guys are interested in that but anyways that's the only reason I still leave the boost ICF when I'm not using it for boost control is for the safeties alright so now once we get all that set up we can go down here to the fun stuff to uh, your what your boost ramp will be this would just be something really generic just to kind of give you guys an idea and I leave this at 99 just because I mean when you roll into it on the street no matter what you know, I mean you'll have boost forever and I can't remember right I, th I think if even if I just left this at whatever eight seconds that it would just keep going whatever the amount I put it at until it reset I can't quite remember exactly but I just go ahead and leave it on 99 that way I know for a fact it'll be boost forever you know when you're on the street and you just want to have some fun it's always there the only time that this will reset is if you're on the button or you get you know with get out of these parameters like below 50 percent below 2500 or above 8000 which most of you guys will probably never be above 8000 but that's the only time on a reset or if you just pedal it and you got pedaling control over here and I didn't explain that yet but that's another cool thing on this nitrous deal is that when you leave it at none it'll do full timer reset so if you pedal it it'll start your ramp back over from the beginning which is awesome if you're on a sketchy road or whatever and you're starting to really lose it you pedal it it'll come back in really soft but if you're really trying to go fast that'll slow you down and you go to pause to where you'll pedal it it'll pause wherever you pedaled it in the boost ramp and when you get back in it it'll just resume where you left off and that's really the fastest way to do it but I'll just do it a little generic boost ramp here just something like that and you can just see you know as soon as you let go of the button this table will be active and it'll start the timer do your boost ramp whatever and then it'll do this every single time that you're within these parameters and not on the uh, two-step button so pretty simple and I kind of like doing it this way you know it just a lot of guys don't want to mess with co2 or onboard air and 
you know the dome control stuff I like it it's pretty simple but some people don't want to mess with it so this is another way to go about it one other thing that I did on this truck I was working on that I forgot to explain to you guys real quick is another cool thing is you can do a, a scramble button on this so you can add boost you know just off of a button say you know you got a boost ramp that's for an A to B pass and the suckers hooking but the guys ahead of you you can hit the button and it'll give you a certain amount of duty cycle more on top of what you already have in the boost ramp and you know raise boost but you'll need to add the uh, advanced tables so you have to go back to add config advanced default and it'll say and warn you that you can screw everything up and blow up everything click OK and you set up as a 1d table And you'll set it up as a nitrous offset I'll just do it by RPM it doesn't really matter because it's just going to be a, a straight amount but uh and then you'll have to go you'll have to make a custom input for it you can set it up to 12 volt or ground trigger whatever and go back over here to your table switch to enable go down to scramble so this will be enabled when your scramble buttons on and I have another video on how to do scramble uh, with traditional boost control if you guys are interested and I do it on the bump bump button and you can do this the same way you can have the bump button and scramble all in the same button you know, and you and if you do that then uh, I don't want to get too crazy into this but that's just staging that's for bump go to staging output is below that way you're it's not enabling this when you're on the trans brake and you're bumping in if that's confusing you can watch my other video and it'll make more sense to you and then you just set this up to whatever extra amount you want you know you got this at 50% you know you're making 12 14 pounds of boost whatever and that's a good clean pass but you want a little bit more if the guys ahead of you if the things hooking and going good then you just do an extra you know 20% or something and you can do this RPM you can do this anything you want but I just keep it simple and do RPM whatever it's just gonna be a set amount when you're on the button so and then I'll just offset that 20 more percent on top of your your 50 you have here or whatever but that's how you do it 